Hi, today I'm going to show you how to evaluate radiometric image or video very simply using our Thermolab software. To start, on the top left is the Files, Favorites and File Tree from where we select videos to analyze. I have one on my desktop, so we'll select it and click Analyze. The video is now loaded into Thermolab. We can zoom in and out as required. These are the saving and export tools. These are the ROIs. ROIs are regions of interest which calculate the lowest average and highest temperatures within its borders. We can give each ROI a different colour, it's not important right now, but when we start to view the graphs it will become more clear. In order to analyse we need a region of interest, so I'll select and drag a ROI over the areas we're interested in. Thermolab automatically identifies the coldest and hottest pixel within each ROI. If we run the video, we can see from the ROI table the lowest average and highest temperatures. We can select one or all to delete. We can change the colors. Temperature tools. Deltas. Using these you can set up a temperature value for each ROI to monitor, showing the differences in temperature between the hottest and coldest pixel in the ROI. Nine point six. Results are shown here. Again we can delete one or all of the deltas. Isotherms are used to easily identify all areas in the image or video either inside or outside your temperature range. By selecting your range type, above, below, in between or outside, and temperatures, the software will automatically show all pixels in your chosen colour in the image or video. You can use the temperature range slider to fine tune your selection. Minimum, maximum, delete. Temperature range. Automatic mode is the default setting. In manual mode, you can customize the temperature range with the temperature range slider. So if I set the maximum temperature from this video, and we'll set a minimum about 30. Everything below 30 will be shown in black, like these two reflective metal components. They aren't this cold, but they are reflecting the ambient temperature and made of metal, so they have a different emissivity to the rest of the circuit board. But we'll leave it on auto. Histograms displays a small histogram chart on the temperature range slider, showing the number of pixels at any given temperature. Palettes. There's a lot of them here. A frequently used palette is the rainbow. But black and white palettes work well. The nice thing about these palettes is they show low temperatures in grey and we're interested in colour. So as temperature rises, differences are easier to see. The choice of colour palette depends on your application. Some palettes show more contrast, some less. That's why we offer so many to choose from.
Moving to the right, thermal source is the image or video you're currently watching. File info table contains the camera details and more. Radiometric info. In Dermolab you can even change the settings of the camera. If the parameters were not set correctly when we recorded the video you can adjust them in the menu on the right. You can change emissivity, reflected temperature and more. But these are the two most important parameters. The importance of these parameters should be understood. Help is available from thermography training courses or videos. In various manuals or the camera provider should be able to advise you about the correct settings for your particular application. Map source. The map source panel processes the GPS data of the file and displays them on a map. You can zoom in or out and move the map by dragging the cursor. We have none shown here because this file is from a stationary camera so it doesn't have GPS data. The ROI table, the delta and isotherms. Thermal profile. This graph shows the temperature of each individual pixel in the ROI. Now you can see the advantage of coloured ROIs. Histograms. Histograms show the amount of pixels at a chosen temperature within the ROI. You can choose the amount of temperature points to view. Again, they're shown in the colours you have selected. Time profile. Here we have a dynamic real-time graph. In the video we've turned on the circuit board and we've watched the temperature rise and fall. Again, the advantages of coloured ROIs. It is a very data rich process because of the amount of data in the radiometric images and videos. It also contains the raw data from the processors. As it processes the graph it has to calculate everything based on emissivity, reflected temperature and more. So don't be surprised if it takes a little time to plot the graph in detail. It is possible to speed it up, but we may begin to lose data if your PC's processor cannot keep up. It's only by allowing the full video to run through fully that the graph will be rendered perfectly accurate pixel by pixel. We only want the maximum temperature, so I'll cancel the other curves. Minimum average. Minimum and average. You can see in the time profile, we've already seen the processor heat up. The maximum temperature was 68. This allows me to trim or navigate the video and the graph itself. I'm not going to go through the whole 4 minute video but we'll jump through it manually. We've already seen the maximum as the board is shut off, the temperature drops down quickly. Circuit board temperatures are important to developers because they need to know what temperature the processor and other components reach and identify potential problems. Where they could add additional cooling, modify the CPU mountings or employ any other remedy. In the video we found the maximum temperature and we watched what heats up where but ultimately the maximum temperature is the number we're interested in. You can export the graph in Excel and you can run that graph again and adjust the length to fit nicely with presentations. 3D graphs gives a live spatial representation of the thermal values. We're able to reposition the graph to show all sides, zoom in or out or remove various effects. You can even take a slice for deeper analysis.
exporting. You'll probably want to add a snapshot in the report you're going to present. Export images or videos in JPEG, PNG, TIFF or CSV. You can export individual images or snapshots from this video in Excel file. Thermal Lab allows you to export a radiometric thermal image that we can edit further or a simple thermal image that can be opened in any photo viewer which you can share with others. If we go back to the thermal source, I usually save a thermal image because I may want to edit it later. Adjust the temperature scale, change the palette or put in some isotherms. A radiometric image file is also much bigger and takes up more disk space and not everyone can open it. Settings on the lower left of the screen. In general tab allows us to change certain parameters including temperature units and distance etc. And in the export tab we can alter how and where we export files. Thank you for watching Workswell's tutorial.